coaster. What can I label? If I know the 38, what side do I know and what side do I want? Absolutely. So if I have the O and I want the H, do I use sine, cosine, or tangent? Mm -hmm. So I'm using sine because I have the O and I want the H. Sine, what always goes next to the sine, cosine, or tangent? Mm -hmm. And then what's my fraction? What rises to the top and what sinks to the bottom? make my fraction and the O is the numerator and the H is the denominator. So 20 over X. What do I have to do because the X is in the denominator? Mm. Absolutely. And what do you get when you do 20 over sine 38? Absolutely. Are there any answer choices that I could eliminate because I know the hypotenuse is always the longest side? Anything under 20. Anything under 20. So I know it's definitely not A or B. So sometimes if you're not sure how to set up the trig or you get a weird answer, always look and see, does it make sense? Is it reasonable? Right? In geometry, you can usually, especially if it's multiple choice, you can eliminate a couple of things just because they don't even make a lick of sense. So what about this one? <clears throat> Ooh. What do I put for my reason for AC equals AC? Is that definition of congruent triangles? I put reflexive too. So this guy goes right here. And then for this last thing, it's always one of these. Side, 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 angle, side, hypotenuse, leg. I said those backwards. But what do I have marked in my drawing up here? Do I have sides or angles? Sides. Sides. So this has got to be side, side, side. Right? You can only do what you're given up here and that reflexive side because you can always do reflexive sides. So just look to see what you have. This one is kind of tricky. The long way to do this is to find the distance for all of these things. So this distance and this distance, we would have to prove congruent. And this distance and this distance, we would have to prove congruent. And then all of those other ones, we would have to prove congruent, right? If we think about it though, this triangle, triangle one, will reflect over onto triangle two. I could fold that in half. That purple line with the two tick marks is a line of symmetry. And then triangle three will flip over onto triangle two. The purple line with the one tick mark is a line of symmetry. So ladies and gentlemen, all three of those triangles are exactly the same. You can definitely take the long way through it and find all those distances. You can kind of count. So like this is one, two, three, four, five. And this is one, two, three, four, five. So we know those sides are exactly the same just because we could count them. But everything else is a little harder to see. So before I put any of those in there, does it kind of make sense to look at it as lines of reflection? Maybe kind of, sort of. So one flips on a two and three flips on the two. Yes, no, maybe so. This one looked like it was an easy one. So what is this doing? If I've made these, that little X, right? with my compass and I realized that this is just kind of stinky because I haven't had been able to put compasses in your hand. 
The next thing I'm going to do is go through that intersection. So anytime you see one of those little X's on a construction, you're going to go through that intersection. What have I done here? Bisected D for sure. And then squares have everything, ladies and gentlemen. And if you're not sure, draw a square. So if you draw a square, the diagonals are perpendicular. My square doesn't look quite right, but they are perpendicular. They bisect each other. And they are congruent. All of those work. The square is the yes shape. Almost everything is true for a square. All right, the Mac Daddy question. What can I label in this question? What do I know? What's the measure of this angle right here? One twenty. Yeah. So I can put a one twenty there. And then um, B, C, D, B, C, D. What's this angle? Is that the 2X plus 30? The one that I put the dot in. Is that 2X plus 30 or is that X? So if I start at B and I draw my line to C and then I draw it to D, so B, C, D, that's X. And then from A to D to C, A to D to C, this angle in here is the 2X plus, hmm, that should be a 30, 2X plus 30. So if I connect those, what kind of shape is that, A, B, C, D? It is A, B, C, D is a quadrilateral. And what should all the angles in every quadrilateral known to man add up to? 360. So I can add up all those angles. 360 equals 120 plus X plus 2X plus 30. But that's only three angles. What angle am I missing? Aha. So that 90 degree angle. So I add all of those up. I've got one X and two X's. So that's three X and 120, 150, 240. Did I do that correctly? Did I make any calculation mistakes? No. So three X equals 120 and X equals 40. Am I done? Why not? You have to plug in the X Do I have to plug in the X everywhere? Okay. So let me get a different color because this is starting to look really kind of cluttered. So I know this angle is 40. That doesn't really look like a 40. And this angle is 2 plus times 40, which is 80, 90, 100, 110. So this angle is 110. Okay. Am I done now? What's my answer? What's the measure of BCE? 140. Why is it 140? I agree with you 100%. Why is it 140? I was saying, what was the thing with That pink one says 40. Let's make that more clear. Wait, and then the one below is 110. So B C E makes a straight line, correct? And if B, C, D is 40 degrees, what's the rest of that? That's how you got your 140. 
So we had to use the numbers in the quadrilateral, right? The purple numbers in order to find the pink numbers. Once we have the 40 and the 110, because we substituted everything back in, which I loved, then the final step, and this is a monster of a problem, guys. This is why I say to you, you want to take this test three times if we end up having to take this SOL. And it's good for almost any test, honestly. You go through the first time, you do everything you know 100% you know how to do. You don't even stop to look twice at this problem because you know it's going to be a monster. And then you come back and you work it out. And you're like, oh, this isn't so bad. I've just got to do one step at a time. So step number one was identify the quadrilateral. Step number two was substitute all your variables back in so you get all of your angles. And then step three in this one is to see that this obtuse angle is supplementary to the acute angle. So 40 plus 140 equals 180. So my answer is gonna be 140 because that's what I'm looking for, DCE. Now it's time to take a breath. Whoo! I'm glad we're finding the, miss the missing angles. You have to find out what all the angles add up to, right? To so subtract. Absolutely. So we know this is a parallelogram, right? And in parallelograms, my opposite sides are congruent and parallel. So can I label DC 15? And then yes. I. I know these two sides are opposite and parallel. So if this side is eight, this side is also eight. Yes. Okay. And then my acute angles. So acute is gonna equal acute. Acute equals acute. So what's angle B? If angle D is acute and angle B is acute and acute equals acute, what's the measure of angle B? It would, be it would be 68, yeah. And we haven't practiced these guys. So chime in and if we get them right, that's fantastic. And if we have to modify an answer, then we'll modify the answer, right? So then I've got parallel lines here right? Parallel lines. I'm just going to extend it a little bit so it's easier to look at. And then we've got a transversal. So I've got an acute angle that's purple and then an obtuse angle that's pink. So acute plus obtuse equals what? Because, oh, yeah, 180 because they're same side interior angles way back from the beginning of the year in September. So if I know that the purple angle that's acute and the pink angle that's obtuse equal 180, what's the measure of the pink angle? 112. 112. Oh, and I wrote this in the wrong spot. So angle C is 112. And angle B should have been the 68. That's my purple angle. So what's angle A? Would angle A be 112 too or no? It would, absolutely. Tell me why. There's two different reasons why. Because of the parallelogram, well, the line. I forgot what it was called. The line actually drew the pink line. Uh-huh. The transversal? Yes. Yes, absolutely. These guys, the 112 and the 68, are also supplementary, right? So we can do obtuse equals obtuse. or acute plus obtuse equals 180. There's a third way. I have three angles, right? And I know it's a quadrilateral. So A plus B plus C plus D would have to equal 360. So if I know 68, 68, and 112, I could always subtract those from, one eight, or from 360 and get the, the final 112. Was that helpful? Hopefully. So we're going to do the same exact thing in number two. Talk to me about number two. What do you know? What can you mark? Because you know it's a parallelogram.
Mm -hmm. So M, L, and J, K are parallel. And what else do I know? Are they congruent if it's a parallelogram? Absolutely. Absolutely. So angle L and angle J are going to be congruent. That's a seven, by the way. And put that there. Make it a little easier to read. What else do I know? You do. MJ is congruent to LK for sure. So LK is going to be in red. So these two angles should be congruent, the blue angles. Ah, uh, the sides. Okay. So that side and that side are the same. Yeah. Okay. How can I find those blue angles? Um, well, it, it should be congruent, but it, because it could equal 180 from 127. Absolutely. So these two angles are same side interior. So they should add up angle L plus angle K should equal 180. So what's angle K going to measure? 53. Absolutely. And if K equals 53, then what's M equal? Also 53. Any questions on that? It just takes some time to think through all of these rules for quadrilaterals. There's just so many of them. And once you do a handful of problems, it's kind of like trig. You get, you build confidence and then you're like, oh, this isn't so bad. There is a little thing down here that I think is going to be important. It's been a little while since I looked at this problem, so I'm not sure. We still have a parallelogram, so we got to read all of those words super carefully. What are the easy things to fill in? Would R, U, and S, T be congruent? Absolutely. So R, U, and S, T are the same. What else? R, S, and U, T. R, S, and U, T are going to be the same. I don't think I'm feeling yellow today. Let's do orange. What else? Well, you know, R, T should be 30, but it's also 5 centimeters. Hallelujah. So if it's been bisected, right? What's RV? Mm -hmm. But it's asking me for VS. Okay, VT I've got. So VT is my orange. So how do I find VS? Um, 
are the diagonals congruent in a parallelogram? So if I go back to my shape, and this is the one that's tempting, right? So if I go back to a shape, let me see if I can make one. I know I'm screen sharing, so you might not be able to see my picture depending on how you have it. But if you find so you can see my webcam, if I have a rectangle, then the diagonals are going to be congruent, right? But if that rectangle is run over by a bus, it's a parallelogram. Now I've got one short diagonal and one long diagonal. One short diagonal and one long diagonal. So how can I find the S? They are. So U, V, and V, S are congruent. And do I have a number on U, V? So what's V, S? Seven. So all of the information is hidden in these problems. It's just a matter of uncovering it. You have to be a little bit of a detective. And always go back to either the shapes that you built yesterday or the notes, depending on what works for you, to kind of remind yourself about all of the rules. So we still... Was VS7? If the diagonals are bisected, diagonals are bisected, then the two red sides are congruent and the two orange sides are congruent. The answer is yes. You're welcome. So what about this guy? We're going to talk about more angles here than sides. If I know FC is parallel to ED, can I make a Z side transversal side? What other angle is 21 degrees? Because they're alternate interior. So for an angle, I'm gonna name it with three letters. How do I name this other angle in the Z? C, D, E is going to be twice as big. So here, all of these are going to be 21 degrees because the angle has been bisected. So G, D, E, 100%. So G, D, E is 21 degrees. That's this one. Name those other 21 degree angles. We could also name that F. C, D, G, C, D, G, uh-huh, this one. Or C, D, F, we can name all of those 21 degrees, right? So when we go look over here on the side, let's see which ones those are. D, E, C. D, E, C, so I need to know this one, that's green. And this starts getting super confusing. So C, D, E, C, D, E, oh, I can find that one. What's C, D, E? Forty-two. 42. 
and then ECD. ECD. Ooh, I need to know this one. ECD. Let me erase some of this stuff because it's starting to get a little cluttered. So ECD, ECD, how do I, um, if I know CD and FE are parallel, can I make that Z? So what's the measure of ECD? EC 71. So you just have to take these one at a time. Um, let's do blue. D F E D F E D F E D. So D F E is this blue angle. What's it going to be if F has been bisected? Half of the 21 or equal to the 21? Because this whole thing was 42 because each of them was 21. So if this whole thing is 42, what's each half? 21. So D, F, E, D, F, E is going to be 21. And this is like next level. So now let's go back to the green one. D, E, C. D, E, C. If I know the orange side over here is 71, what's the green side? 71. 71, because angles in a parallelogram are bisected. Angles in a parallelogram are bisected. And alternate interior angles are congruent. Those are like the two things that you need to know for this one. And it's a lot. I'm hearing the same couple of voices. I know a lot of you are sitting there unsure of yourselves and that's okay. But in number five, I want to hear some other voices. So what do I know? What can I label? I just want to know what I can label from all this given stuff right now. The X, Y mm -hmm. is 15. We can label 15 as X, Y. So X, Y is 15. And what else do I know because of X, Y? That W, X is 15, too. Ah, so W, X. W, X or W, Z? W, Z, sorry. W, Z, no worries. W, Z is 15. So I know that. What else do I know from the given stuff? WX is 22. It for sure is 22. So if I label that, what else do I know? Because WX is 22. That ZX is 22. That ZX or ZY? ZY. ZY is 22. So ZY is 22. And then what else do I know? WT is 23. WT is 23. So that's 23. So what else do I know? Is TY 23? Because diagonals are bisected. Okay, there's one more thing I know about sides. What else do I know about sides? Mm -hmm. So if the whole thing is 52, what's half of it? Mm -hmm. 
So TX is 26. TX is 26. And what was WY? I found 46. Absolutely. So if WT is 23 and TY is 23, then WY is twice that. It's 46 because the diagonals have been bisected. Any questions on those sides? Is it starting to come together a little bit? So let's look at the angles. The angles get a little messier. WZY is 72. So WZY is 72, right? Just like the diagonals bisect, angles also bisect. Angles bisected by diagonals, okay? So another thing that you need to know is your angles are bisected by diagonals. So if the whole thing is 72, what's each half? Thirty-six. Thirty-six. So which angles are going to be thirty-six degrees? Is that anything that I need to know? I don't know. What other angle is seventy-two degrees? Um, WXT. WXY is 72, yeah, yeah, and WXT yeah. would be that 36, right? So those little ones on the sides are 36, and the whole thing together is 72. I don't know where that's going to come in to help us, but it'll help us at some point. I don't see anything oh, obviously down here. Do you see any obvious answers down there? T Z Y T Z Y yes thirty six right because half of seventy two is thirty six T Z Y T Z Y this one wait thirty six is gonna answer thirty six is gonna answer twenty oh no. You are so right. I wonder what the right answer is. Okay. Let me make a note of that. Question five. Help. T, Z, Y should be 76. Oh, no, 36. Okay. I'll look for that one. Is anything else 36 or 72? X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, X, W, T, X, W, T, X, Y, T, X, Y, T. So I think everything else comes from another place. What about X, W, X, T, W, X, T, W, X, T. Oh, that's why. That's the problem. The problem is here. That's conflicting. So that's saying that's 35. So I bet this one is supposed to be 35. Put 35 in there. That's a little maddening. And then X, Y, Z, X. Y or X, Z, Y, X, Z, Y. Okay. How does this one help us? C, W, T. C, W, T is 59. So what other thing is 59? Wouldn't it be X, Y, Z or no? X, Y, Z, 100% is 59, right? 
Those opposite angles are going to be 59. This is not drawn to scale, is it? This is bothering me. So then X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z is going to be 59, right? X, Y, Z is 59. And then X, W, T, X, W, T, X, W, T. Are these angles bisected? Oh, no, 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 no. See, now I'm all flustered. Let's erase some of this. Let's back up a minute. ZWT. ZWT is 59. That means XWT is also 59, right? So that total angle is going to be 59 plus 59, which is 118. I'm sorry, you guys got to bear with me here. X, W, T, Z is 118 because it's 59 plus 59 because the angles are bisected and we're given a half. So then X, Y, Z is going to be 118. X, W, T is... X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. Oh, geez. Maybe I just need to cancel this question entirely. I wonder who wrote this question. Hopefully it wasn't me. X, Y, T, X, Y, T. So what's this angle? Fifty-nine, X, Y, T. I think I'm just going to delete question five. So that was a whole lot of time wasted on a question I'll probably delete. Okay. That is a yucky question. I don't like it. Let's see if question six gets any better. Which quadrilaterals always have diagonals that bisect opposite angles? So what does that even mean, bisect opposite angles? I've got a rectangle. I've got a parallelogram. I've got a rhombus. And I've got a square. So this is A, this is B, this is C, and this is D. What does it mean for diagonals to bisect opposite angles? It's kind of what we were just struggling with in the last question. It, cuts it, in half. it does. So these two angles are exactly the same and these two angles are exactly the same and those two angles are exactly the same and those two angles are exactly the same. Is that true for parallelograms? Did we just find that up here in our convoluted way? Yeah, so it's true for parallelograms. If it's true for parallelograms, is it also true for rectangles? Are those going to be bisected and bisected and bisected? They're always going to be 45 degrees, 45 and 45, or are they always going to be 45 in a square? So I think it's true for parallelograms, not necessarily true for rectangles, but it should be true for rhombuses and for squares. I think you want those guys chosen. And if we go back and open our digital notebook, do I have the digital notebook open somewhere? I don't know if I do. We can always go reference it here. So I'm gonna look for rectangles. Is it not hyperlinked? My 
my computer is sad with me now. Rectangles, the diagonals are congruent, but these angles are not going to be sliced exactly in half. Not going to be sliced exactly in half. Okay. What about number seven? Decide whether the parallelogram is a rhombus, a rectangle, or a square based on the markings. So what shape has congruent sides and four right angles? Square, yeah. Decide whether the parallelogram is a rhombus, a rectangle, or a square. A rhombus, a rectangle, or a square. It, it is a rectangle, yeah, absolutely. What about this one? A parallelogram is a rhombus, a rectangle, or a square? It, it is a rhombus. So the rhombus doesn't have right angles. The rectangle doesn't have congruent sides. It has two pairs of congruent sides, not four congruent sides. But the square is the yes shape. It has everything. Right? So realize here, too, our question number five that was kind of a nightmare, a horrible nightmare, got us stuck and wasting a whole lot of time. If we had just kind of cut our losses and skipped over that one, we would have gotten these three questions super fast, super easy, right off, boom, the bat. Wait, can you go back to number um, six? Mm hmm Okay, I wasn't sure if the rectangle was or not. Yeah, the rectangle is definitely not. 